First of all, I would like to thank you for the words uh, resonate with me so much, and I am so great. Oh, thanks. Thank you so much, my friend. I'm a 24-year-old female, and my health journey started over a year ago when I became vegetarian. I became vegan almost three months ago, and I've been eating mainly fruits all day long for the past six months. I'm having several issues that I want to resolve, and I was hoping you could help me a little. I included several eye pictures, so I would love it if you could take a quick look at them. I know you don't do iris analysis. That's okay. Uh, I don't know if the green has been there all my life, but I think they are turning more green since I started to eat this much fruit. Do you think it's possible that I might actually have blue eyes? But I'm wondering why was I born with brown eyes and my younger sister with bright blue eyes? Well, that's possible. I mean, it just depends. I mean, I don't know. There's some geneticists that think they can figure this out, and maybe that's true, but somewhere in the family they can. Well, let's take a look and see if they're truly brown. Uh, she had to inherit the same weak genetics from my parents. Well, yeah, but some can pick up more dad, more grandma, grandpa on dad's side, or we go over to mom, you might pick up more mom than her. You know, there's always those sort of things. Do you know why this is? I do have blue eyes. If I do have blue eyes, I'm determined to let the brown disappear. I would be too. Uh, let me see. These are several other issues I'm experiencing. Could you recommend which herbs I should take? So before I read that, Let's see what we can see on the eye first. It's always the test. All right. Hmm. Flashlight. No got. Um. Hmm. You know, sweetheart, I'm going to have to tell you, you're going to have to get me a better picture for the color. I can say that it is a strong possibility you have blue eyes. Or you have very light brown eyes, one of the two. Uh, very hard with this picture. There's some spots where I'm thinking, hmm, maybe blue. And there's other spots that look like real light, light brown. I'll say this, if you have brown eyes, they're very, very light. Um, they're almost this color where my finger is. But one thing that sticks out real predominantly, sweetheart, is your GI tract wall, is the wall of your small and large intestines. Uh, I'm going to put my finger right where there's some issues you need to think about. And also look at the thickness of your bowel wall. I don't know if you guys can see this or if I'm uh, too close. I have no idea. It's enough to say you're extremely malabsorbed. You have thick lymph backed up in the wall of the bowel here. And that's real important to deal with. You've got a right knee, a right femur, and a big time right hip. So that femur going into the hip and all that, that's all genetically involved there. Also, I'll say this, I definitely think the gallbladder is involved here. Maybe the pancreas, I don't know, but definitely the gallbladder, the arm here, the elbow, uh, part of the upper rib cage here. Uh, some throat weakness going on here, a tad bit of thyroid. You need better pictures where you don't have, you've got um, a window or light behind you and your eyes reflecting that. So it's, uh, it, you need to be in a dark room. Look at the video that Marcy and Jen did. It, it's just really perfect. These are good, but you've got too much reflection and therefore I'm, I can't see the actual color. But uh, it sure looks like blue to me. I, I need more more a better picture to tell you that uh, and the reflection is an area I can't see and you might want to pull up some more you got a couple spots in the head area you'd want to fix also there is a uh, either pituitary or pineal or both uh, when you get up to the tonsils the thyroid the throat you got several weaknesses up in that and maybe in some upper neck on the right side uh, again, the same thing with the left eye. You just have this reflection. It would have been pretty good had it been for the reflection. Uh, I'll say this, honey. You've got to get up in the head, get your sinuses drained, get, get all this lymph moving, get your kidneys filtering because on the left side you have more involvement in the head area. So you got a lot of involvement here from probably uh, the mastoid into the cerebellum. This is going to be equilibrium, dizziness. It's going to give you a lot of problems if you're not careful. Um, I'm looking at uh, left ear, even maybe even packing left shoulder here. 
uh, uh, pituitary, uh, definitely going on here with pineal transverse colon. Got to get in and really fix your bowels because now it's just, I want to say blue, but I need a better picture because <clears throat> you could have light, light brown. But around your bowels, real thick with lymph. Uh, I'll say this, your groin, your leg on the left side, your groin on the left side, your hip on the left side is also involved. So you got bilateral hip issues, groin issues, and leg issues. And during a detox, you're probably going to feel these. So you just have to work through it and start regenerating this weakness. I'd say it probably wouldn't hurt to get into your spleen a little bit for a while. Adrenals are chronic on the left side, a little kidney weakness. you got to get that cleaned up as well. Bladder, part of the bladder is chronic. Uh, the wall of the bladder is backed up. You have genetic weakness in the bladder, especially on the left wall. The, the wall, the lymph is backed up in the wall. That's interstitial cystitis. Uh, you've got some uh, very chronic areas of the bladder that you want to deal with. The, the uterus looks uh, lymphatically chronic, but uh, still not as uh, involved as the bladder. Uh, could have a spot even in the vaginal wall. We'll have to take a look at that some other time. Again, more mid-back uh, tonsils, that sort of thing. A lot of lymph in the uh, parathyroid and a little bit of a weakness in the thyroid here. So she says, goes on here, she has frequent urination. Well, you've got to deal with that bladder. And it's coming at you, so you really want to focus on your urinary tract, your adrenal glands. Get your lymph and moving, honey, because you've got to get this chronicness out of the bowel. I'm going to say that you want to get the, the brown out. Um, frequent urination, I'm guessing this is kidneys and bladder, plus one should. Yeah, I'm going to say probably, yeah. Uh, I'm going to say a little more bladder than kidneys, though, uh, myself. Um, yeah, I mean, you got a little spot or so in the right kidney, but I'm thinking you got more bladder issues. And you could have a prolapsus. You never know what the, in that shape it, it is. Uh, plus one, should mention that I'm starting to filter a little bit after months of increasing my fruit consumption. That's key, guys. Uh, and yeah, let me say this. Hope you're filtering. <laughs> You know, because this is really vital information for everyone out there. Um, the only herbs I've been taking are some herbal teas for kidneys and bladder from the health food store. Yeah, if you're in a place and you can afford to get on our 14-week protocol, I highly recommend it. Uh, it's hard to see, but I don't see too many nerve rings, so that's a big plus for you. Uh, red spider veins, broken capillaries on the base of it around my nostrils. Don't know the cause. Doesn't matter. I still work on my parathyroid. Remember the cause. If you want to keep life simple and you want it to be right 99% of the time, the cause is always acidosis and lymphatic system problems. And it takes you right back to the kidneys and adrenal glands which breaks down when you use too much of a protein in your diet. So when you go back to grains and beans and dairy products, guess what's going to keep breaking down on you? Yeah, I'd say. So important to really look at this, sweetheart. I, I'd work on my parathyroid just a tad bit, but you still have a pituitary that's chronic that I see. Underdeveloped breasts, and again, I would go to the pituitary, but also to the adrenal glands. I would do my female reproductive formula for a few months. That'll pop up your pituitary if your menses is irregular to pull it into balance there. Uh, it'll bring your it'll bring your breast size up a little bit here. It just it'll bring you into balance. And if your breasts need to grow, they will do that. Hey, we've had that many times. So, but got to work on that parathyroid and thyroid. I see that as two big issues here. I'm guessing these are my adrenal glands plus my pituitary. Smart lady, I like that. Ooh, I like smart smart people. You guys are the best out there. And I'm not just saying that. You learn this. And I'm telling you, you can cure anything, anywhere. I'm th it's so much fun. And instead of wallowing in the sewage of diseases and things that nobody understands and it's all made up believe world anyway. Understand reality, what your body is, what it's designed to eat, that sort of thing. Just because we've had generations of eating outside of that realm does not change a thing. And if you think adaptation is part of the human body, take a look at where we are at the condition of the human cell.
and it's all whether you whether you're neurotoxins, excitotoxins, doesn't matter. They're all acids for the most part. Add that. Oh, I'm also really small, five foot three. Boom, gotcha. Pituitary, big time, honey. Yeah, you got to work on that. How old are you? Twenty. Uh, Twenty-four. I, I, I would be working on my growth factors. I'd be working on my pituitary and my parathyroid, absolutely. Can I resolve my underdeveloped breast by diet and herbs? Absolutely. Uh, I have also, and I, would, I wonder about your height. It, it, you never know. I mean, it is cool to see the human body regenerate after years and years down. So you never know. You know, man uh, might find that unusual. <laughs> We've lived, we're so dumbed down as humans in the human experience that we lost our belief in anything that's possible. And that's why everybody's so dumbed down. It's the negative forces. Don't let the negative forces control you or dumb you down. Talk to the head, the faces, and listening. I'm free. I'm free of the mind. I'm now able to observe and enjoy life outside of my mind. If I need my mind to go find me something, I'll send it to go do that. If I follow my mind constantly, I'm lost in my thoughts. Some of them are too good. So, you know, it's just that sort of thing. Uh, I have had low self-esteem because of my whole life. Well, honey, you know, you've got your adrenals down. You, you know, you've got some things down, and I can see why you have that. But I say also that parathyroid, you want to work on that one. And don't worry about breast size. One of the things that I'm a sticker on is those guys out there that want women to have big breasts, get over that. I mean, a woman is a woman no matter what size or whatever. And to have uh, my uh, younger son had his first wife put implants in. You know, and I, I couldn't stop him. It's just the way it is. But she did have small breasts, and it's like, well... I understand that. Work on your pituitary and see if you can. We've had a lot of cases call in where women have uh, verified that their breasts have increased with that. And I think that would be important for your monthly cycles, your menses, because that controls your monthly cycles and that can go out of whack. You can get excessive bleeding with pituitary problems. So, yeah, it's a big deal here and your body needs to clean up. You need to absorb your food properly. You're not absorbing your food properly. You've got quite a bit of chronic lymph involved here. So, I don't know, we'll see. Get me a clear picture without the light reflection and real clear and I'll tell you what color eyes you got. It's possible they're real light brown though, but we'll see. Uh, if so, which herbal formula should I take for this? And is it possible to still grow in height an inch or two at my age? Well, I'm hoping it is. Because we had a, an older lady with spinal bifida I mean, she's older. I mean, I think she was in her 20s or 30s, born without L4 and L5. And on this program, she grew L4 and L5. Uh, miraculous. But that goes to show you, I don't know what's not possible and what's possible on these high energetic nutritional diets. I've seen all kinds of regeneration take place. And it's like, you know, I've had a, I've had a lot of oh my God moments in my life and just amazing to see that. But then you start to realize, well, we're dumbed down. You know, just because medical doctors are lost in their world of diseases and they can't cure anything and at least little, let alone regenerate tissue, they don't even know what type of diet man should be eating. We can't live in that world anymore. You got to break away from that world because that is a nowhere place world. It's a killing machine beyond no other. And it's not just me saying these things. You know, I just read you a, a, a top oncologist viewpoint of that. And he's not alone. And he's one of the guys, thank God, that got his karma right. Because I'm telling you, this isn't good. You reap what you sow here. And I'm just saying that for those souls involved. You want to grow and have some, you know, get have a more interaction with, with God and, and, and nature. And, and that's on all levels. The, the, the amount of fun and ecstasy and joy is immeasurable. You can't measure that. Here, the joy is hard to get. In the higher worlds, it's naturally there. I've also been really skinny all my life. Well, malabsorption big time. 
let me tell you, it was always very hard for me to gain weight, and you can see why. Uh, since eating healthier, I lost even more weight, and you're going to be skinny. Remember, we talk about this. Remember, this is old uh, Ian's plate here. Got skinny, but now look at him. I mean, you know, and see, you're just going to get down like that. And there's no, there, people have to understand, you can't fix something of malabsorption and keep on weight until we fix it, because you can't even put on weight as it is. So how do you put on weight on a diet like this that's in the process of fixing something? But you have to understand what malabsorption is. And if you don't understand what malabsorption is, then you don't know how to fix it. This is the problem. If you don't understand what causes anything, yeah, you can't fix them. And sometimes it takes a little while to get into a higher level of health. You have to work through things sometimes. So be careful when you go back to things because that's what I did and it kicked my ass bad. So be careful, young man. My face looks gaunt. Yeah, and I, probably two reasons, parathyroid and malabsorption. So you got to fix yourself. No matter what you look like, sweetheart, you burn through this and get your bowels. Use that GI broom. Uh, get yourself on a 14-week program or as much as you can afford. Go down that road. You know the kidneys are essential, the GI tract's essential, your glands are essential, your lymphatic is essential. You got four essentials beyond anything else that you need to work on. And there's enough going on up here. You got to get the head to detox, sweetheart, and then get an upper circum brain and nerve, and you could do that early on because you're heading for some things up here that might not be too good. You've got a lot of setup for MS. You don't have the nerve ring so much. But you've got the cerebellum, you've got, you've got the, the, the brain uh, areas that possible can create lesions in the future, if not already. So you, you've got the setup here, so you want to be real careful. So this is some of the tips you get yourself out of this with, and you'll get yourself back and healthy. Uh, but you definitely want to work on the pituitary and the, um, and the uh, uh, parathyroid. I would still work with the pituitary first with the female reproductive formula and then maybe shift to a glandular. But that female reproductive formula will tone the female organs as well. And it's a good thing for females to be on. I love that formula, blue ribbon formula. Again, caution. If you're on birth control pills, taking the female reproductive formula is possible to get pregnant. So be careful. Others have gotten pregnant while on birth control with the female reproductive form. It's that powerful. So, caution. I've also been really skinny. Da, 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 da. My, uh, I am especially skinny in my upper body, but not so much in the legs. They are quite short and firm. It is just the way I'm built. Well, work on your, uh, yeah, you got it all down. Malabsorption, you know exactly what's up. I have low libido. Well, work on the female organs, the adrenals, but work on the thyroid as well. When the thyroid's down, it lowers women's libidos. I have had myopia since I was 14. I ha it has gotten worse over the past few years. My left eye, uh, minus 3.50, is worse than my right eye, minus 2.75. I know this is probably congested lymph in my head. Chronic congested lymph. That's a big deal, sweetie. You got to get that out of there. Uh, it's completely dark brown in color, and there is more green only at the bottom. You got exactly, see how nice it is? I mean, it may not be fun to read your eyes for the first time. It wasn't for me either, but it was enough to say that learning how to look at your body is fun. No one can lie to you. You don't have to count on these toxic machines, these radiation machines. You can see in the eye just what's up. You know, you've got only a few systems to work on. The body isn't endless in its systems. You only have a few systems. It's a machine. You're the living consciousness. Your body's a machine. You're not, but this is a conscious machine in certain ways because every cell has consciousness. Everything has consciousness. Even machines have consciousness. <laughs> I remember, a, you know, it was more of a meditator and really getting that energy going. My cars would last and last and last. And when you trade them in, they fall apart. They had dealt with so much energy. Uh, but you're right, you're so right all the way, all the way on this. I, I would use the eye wash topically and internally, uh, but moving lymph is going to be the key, but also enhancing your uh, brain and nervous systems.
um, the central and the autonomic nervous systems. The autonomic more through the adrenal glands and then you're up in the central nervous system and part of the parasympathetic here. And working on that with the brain and nerve formulas are super, super good and upper circuits. How many neat things you can do? Well, these go to this. Uh, the pictures, oh, there's more pages. Well, let me see, this is really long, so, uh, is this sulfur? I, yeah, I mm, eh, there is a hint of orange somewhere in there. If you look at your left eye, approximately around 8 o'clock, it looks like there's some orange. The only thing I can tell you with these brown eyes is if you poop orange or pee orange, it's so, there is sulfur there, but the brown isn't all sulfur. That's almost worse, chronic lymph. Uh, I have dark hair and split ends. Is this due to acidosis? Absolutely. The corners of my mouth are often torn. Dry mouth. That's what acids do. It dries you out and dehydrates you and you start cracking and bleeding. It does the hands, it does the mouth. Everywhere, everywhere. Imagine inside you. And then you get these bleeds, capillary bleeds. Uh, let me see here. They cut even her tongue. I have had lower back pain for years. The, guessing these are the kidneys. Yeah, and bladder. I have to say that your bladder is a, a little bit of a bigger deal than the kidney, sweetie. I have had eczema in the past and now, yeah, you see the skin ring around your eye there. When I take a warm shower, my chest, stomach, back, neck, and arms are covered in red, itchy patches. Oh, well, you're full of fungus. You know, get the fungus out of you, use a parasite air or some antifungal, but at the same time, detoxify your lymph because you're just promoting uh, these uh, uh, microbes to, to help you there. But, you know, as that goes, they disappear after an hour or so, but I'm wondering what this is. This is, you hit it right on, you're a smart woman. It is candida, but I say it's also on top of lymph. I've always had painful menses. It has always improved a bit since going vegetarian and vegan, which it always does. You know, it shows you what proteins do to you, even with your monthly cycles, how they can make it more painful, more odorous, more bleeding. Absolutely. All three of those things. I uh, always have had to take painkillers. Yeah, that's sad. Yeah. Turn yourself totally around, honey. You won't have to do any of that anymore. I have weak knees. Yeah, I've seen that. Also, congestive lymph and acidosis. Well, some genetic here, they, which from the same thing, though, uh, they also hurt when I go jogging and do some, yeah, absolutely, and don't forget that parathyroid. That's why I wouldn't go over and go jogging right now. Get what I'm talking about? Or you're going to lose your knees. And it's like, you, you can wait until you fix some things and then jog all you want. You know, it's smarter, you know, because it's harder to fix things sometimes when they're broken down. I have some excess hair as a woman, I think some facial hair on my lower back. Yeah, you could have testosterone, you're a smart woman. And, uh, but that would mean your steroids are out of balance, which is be obvious, you know, with weaknesses in the adrenals and in the pituitary, anything's possible. And I often have growing pains in my legs, oh, your parathyroid is down, and I think it's down also including from the, para, from the pituitary as well, got to fix both of those. Uh, I also have bad breath when I eat a lot of fruit. I'm guessing this is my... Oh, this is a good example. She brings an interesting thing. Let me read this again. I also have bad breath when I eat a lot of fruit. I'm guessing this is my GI tract that needs to be cleaned up. Now, this um, Evelyn is smart as all get out, uh, I have to tell you. Uh, but that's exactly what fruit does. It's astringent. So it's pulling the proteins out of the mucosa. And of course, guess what? You know, you're smelling all this putrefaction in your bowels and stuff. Absolutely. Last thing, I have a lot of freckles, especially on my face. So don't look at mine. And I burnt really easy in the face. Uh, pituitary. I really believe that's all pituitary, depending on where you're from, the races and all this sort of thing, getting into genetics, blah, 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 blah. I never did have anybody get rid of freckles on the detox, but I'd like to see that in terms of really, you know, in regenerating the pituitary and all that, what can happen with the pigmentations. At the moment, I remember I told you about the lady that had T-cell lymphoma? And I only had her about three or four months, and then she cured herself. I'll put it that way. But her hair was salt and pepper. She was in her 60s, I think, at the time. Her hair was salt and pepper, maybe even the 70s. Uh, and, and her hair turned black again and then turning blonde. <laughs> and she said, you know, I was born with blonde hair. 
So the question is, under an acidic sky, what, even hair color, is that affected? I mean, I, I'm just saying, there's so much we don't know under different chemical moons or skies, and especially when we're dealing in this high acidosis we're in now, uh, which is, Yam is right, uh, it's from everywhere. Uh, manufacturing, it's everywhere. Car exhaust, look at China, and this is so serious. No one takes it serious enough because no one's sitting down with the people, with the folk, and saying, listen, this is chemistry. There's two sides to it. We are now heavily involved in the acid side. In chemistry, acids are considered corrosive. Take a look at the corrosive nature of acids. Look at what it does to fish and frogs and lakes. Look what it does to marine life. And just look, go and look around everywhere. Look what it does to plant life. We're talking about in the top of the, uh, uh, the Smoky Mountains and Clemens Dome, where it was destroying even plant life. Yeah. Well, what else does it destroy? Cells. So you don't have to. It's you don't have to wander far. It's just you must understand academics. We sometimes in these cycles, man goes too far in one thing without bringing balance with it. And I do that in my life. I, I tend to go over too far, and then I pull myself back into balance. Balance, of course, is spirituality. An infusion of spirituality means an infusion of a higher level of looking at things. The ability to look at things from a greater perspective. And the only way you can do that is get a hold of your mind. Your mind's already trained. And it'll keep taking you and creating and all, taking you away from the consciousness or the awareness you have to control that. Pretty soon you're lost and hard to control the mind from when you're lost in it. And you can't get uh, over the mind with the mind. Mind can't fix itself. So these are some of the things to think about. That you need those times alone. Those times where you're very alone with the self and you're just observing the consciousness. You're, you're, matter of fact, if you just sit somewhere like on a beach or somewhere and just play the observation, you just be. Practice stop those thoughts from coming in. Just be and observe. Look at the beautiful water, how it endlessly goes out. Nothing to stop it. You know, like you're, you're looking out over eternity. And let yourself soar and go sometimes. Be the child who lets his imagination soar. But this time, don't let it soar. You control it. You surrender to spirit or to the prana or to the life force, which is yourself. It takes a little practice and a little understanding, but we can do that. At the moment, I'm eating raw till four, uh, vegan, so fruit all day with a bit of green sometimes, and at night a cooked meal. Now that summer is coming, it will be easier to, yeah, and I would just head right off into deeper detox, honey. I'm so sorry for this long, that's okay, but hit it, hit it right on. Hit it right on. Uh, because you've got a lot of brown to get out of there. And get me a little bit better eye, and just make a note on there, to let me see it real quick, and I'll tell you guys if she's got brown eyes or she got blue. Take another look. We'll see. I better tell Chris. Chris. Sending in better ones. Or eye color, okay? There you go. Hi, my, ah, oh, thanks, Zora. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I love you too, really. I'm one of the people that have a lot of orange in my eye. I've been working with my health for almost five years and still can't get rid of that candida. Well, the orange, of course, is sulfur. And, of course, it's going to give you a lot of candida. I would say you're probably going to have to saturate yourself with something like Parasite M for a while, but getting the sulfur out is, is tough. I've always said it's like a glue. And these are the reasons why I say these things, because I've had years of trying to help people get it out. We have people get it out, but it's a slow process. They don't get upset, and you get a little gassy bloaty when it, you're going through it sometimes. But 
GI broom, GI broom, GI broom, and get those kidneys filtering so interstitial hydration can take place. Interstitial means around your cells. And of course, this stuff stuck everywhere in mucus. So you've got a lot of orange mucus that's got to come out if that's the case. And of course, again, I, I consider it as a spawner of fungus. Yeah, absolutely. But I'll keep on going. Yeah, because I don't know anything else. I'll be honest with you. And I do have medical friends. Uh, uh, and they have the same problems and they haven't found an antidote yet for me or for them themselves. We'll soon do some watermelon fast again. Yeah. I think with the GI broom you have a much stronger astringent value and getting your kidneys to filter. This creates hydration throughout the body interstitially and that's how you get rid of things. You get things moving. These things get dehydrated and particularly sulfur for some reason just locks in there like a friggin glue. Now remember the story on uh, um, Goodyear, Charles Goodyear, that he finally used sulfa drugs to harden up his rubber substance to make tires. It took sulfa drugs to harden the tire. Well, if that's the case, why would you, knowing that, of course, I had no idea that was the case until I saw it on History Channel, but if, if pharmaceutical companies knew that, which I'm, I suppose they probably did, knowing they have all the brains, right, um, that, um, uh, why would you use something like that? I, I find it, you know, I don't even know if they realize that it is a cumulative one thing, and that's why people get allergic to penicillin and other sulfa drugs, and of course, and, uh, you know, it, it, meaning that it's accumulating in people, if you still didn't have the eyes to see it, at least you would say, oh, it's accumulating in people because you get allergic to something when you have too much in you or an aspect of it. And so detox fixes all that, of course, because you're cleaning out that which is stored in there. Uh, yeah, you're right here. But you explained that the orange is sulfur and it is congested lymph. Absolutely. But I just don't really understand what the sulfur comes from. Where, where or what the sulfur comes from? Sulfur drugs. Now, people have asked me, if you're raised on well water with sulfur in it, does this create orange eyes? I don't know. Can't tell you. Pretty inorganic. You know, the more inorganic something is, the more it's not going to be bioavailable. It's going to have an accumulative effect. It's not going to have a... Uh, bioavailable means uh, its usability. So its usability could be uh, obviously very low. Matter of fact, it has very little usability as it seems to lock itself within the tissues of the body. You know about as much as I do about this, to be honest with you. But it comes from the use of sulfur medicines, sulfur drugs. Uh, most of those are in the world of antibiotics, but I'm sure there's a lot of sulfur. And I might add, there's glucosamine, chondritin. There's a lot of sulfur constituents out there that I believe could do that. I think sulfites, sulfates of all types will leave sulfur compounds in the body and turn the eye orange. So, and there's a lot of that out there, there's a lot of that in the foods. Uh, sulfur was considered the wonder healer, and I'm looking at all this coming from the AMA from years, and I'm looking at it, and I just cringe at how much of it is bogus crap. It's freaky. Freaky. Do you get it because the proteins, our tissues start to rotten in the body? No, this is, this is, an, this is a consumed... This is consumed, honey. Injected, in some way consumed. Orally, injected, some way it's been consumed. And get this, it could have been from your mother who had it. If you're, you're going to spend a little time in your mom, right? Hopefully around nine months. Well, your lymph system that I noticed becomes a lot like mom's. And so you could have got this sulfur while you were visiting mother. You're hooked right to her blood and lymph systems. But, I don't know. I don't know what to say about it. I don't know what to say about it. Uh, I think you're thinking that I'm saying proteins are the sulfur and things like that. No. 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 The, this is sulfur, sulfates, sulfites. Uh, I don't know what else is sulfur in there. But you look at, um, let's see here. Oh my God, there's sulfur dioxide. There's all kinds of toxic crap in the air even that we could be breathing to bring that in too from, from 
uh, cars and mainly electrical plants and stuff like that. There's a lot of sulfur compounds being used in pharmaceuticals and, and they used to treat with sulfur, just put sulfur on wounds, all kinds of stuff like that. So man has used, had a fetish with sulfur for some reason and uh, not referring to proteins. But you lock sulfur in with the mucus and all this around the cells you're gonna, you know, eventually you're gonna damage your cells, and that's just what all this comes down to. Creates big time malabsorption. Or what is it from the the congested lymph that creates a sulfur? No, it's injected or, or ingested from some source or another because sulfur is just a natural element. Yeah, sulfur is, but when you have it combined in industry, uh, it becomes something else. You have a lot of sulfur compounds in the form of sulfates, sulfites, like I said, um, there's all kinds of sulfur uh, oxides, all kinds of sulfur unions. You know, these minerals union. You know, it's all, all this ionization, all this movement of electrons, you know, this whole process of whole waxing and waning of positive and negative, and the movement from acid to base all the time. This is just a constant process going on. When that can't happen, stagnation of chemistry happens, and that tends to be on the acid side. Very rarely do you see alkalosis, in my opinion. It's achievable, but we're, we're dealing in extreme acidosis. And if they don't get with that, then they, te they treat with acids. And this is why chemo is so deadly. It's nice to see a lot of other people see that, but for those poor folks that walk right up and are used as guinea pigs or for money, uh, there's been way too much evidence to show chemo kills. So what's wrong with the FDA in our country? They're criminal. They're criminal. They're, that they, they've gone criminal. You, you, or, or they're so dumbed down. Uh, that's what I see a bunch of goons with guns sometimes, and they're so dumbed down, they're willing to come after the folk, which is not a good thing in the long run. You know, go back to the kings and queens. You know, you don't go after the folk, because after a while, the folk don't like it no more. And then you're running out the back door as the folk come after you. You know, you can't be criminals on this planet anymore. It's time we infuse it with a little more love, guys. You know, it is not worth killing people for money. I mean, that's bad, bad karma. It's okay if you guys want to spin here for, uh, for a while, but there are plenty of souls that need relief from this, and we're here to give them that. It's just, you know, from one level to another, there's, you know, going to be issues because sulfur is just a natural element <laughs> yeah, by itself. Uh, so in which way do we start pro uh, producing? We don't produce it. Lots of love and love from you from Sweden. Yeah. Yeah, we don't produce it, although we probably do produce factions of. But no, this is already produced in industry. It's in supplements uh, everywhere else. But again, I have been asked about, because the more elemental something is, you can understand that the more unavailable, we don't go out and eat dirt, in other words, for our health. And people ask me about, you know, chopped up shells and dirt and stuff like this to eat. It's like, what? Excuse me. Get our head out of our grounds and get it more up into the skies. This is where God is. Of course, it's all over, but this is, this is where, you know, let's, let's get ourselves more evolved up out of the elemental worlds. Because uh, from a spiritual viewpoint, if any of you want to take a trip backwards, I wouldn't suggest going back to the mineral level, but try to have your spiritual guide take you back to the plant level, and then you tell me what you experience and what that's like, just to give some idea about how that would be on the human body. I can only tell you I've been back to a lot of things, a uh, lot of levels, guys. I just tell you, um, you know, things can get extremely claustrophobic, <sighs> very.